So I met and fell in love with neuroscience in a psychology lecture in my first year of um, undergrad <laughs> university, way back in the early 90s, and was just utterly captivated by the biology of our minds. Um, so I switched universities and switched degrees right back when universities were first kind of creating this degree discipline of neuroscience. And really, I remain today, all of these, probably, would we be 30 years later, um, is, is captivated and interested in what the neurobiology of our minds can teach us about ourselves. That enthusiasm for me has never has never really waned. In the last few years, very, very recently, neuroscience has started to show when you record one brain and record a second brain and you've got that kind of shared kind of synchrony, the brain waves of two people or multiple people synchronize as well. And we think that that perhaps underlies this kind of feeling that we have of you get me or we're all in this together, that kind of what we might call that collective effervescence, um, that feeling that that of we, not just of me. I love that. I love your enthusiasm. I love the language. Um, the words that really resonate and pop out are the words of connection and yeah. you said trust and relationship. And, and that's really quite critical in coaching. Um, I guess my last question is how would you link um, the neuroscience and what you're talking about to, to coaching in education? What would be a come, yeah. some key takeouts for us? Yeah, I think what's what's fascinating here, and there's perhaps a few little difficulties more so in coaching than education, especially in our children are back in the classroom. But what we're starting to tease out from this neuroscience research, the means by which this brain to brain and biological synchrony happens, because it's not ESP, it's not by magic. Um, and there's a couple of ways we know it comes about. It comes about by shared attention. So when you know multiple people or multiple brains are all focused together, whether their bodies are moving together, whether their minds are focused together on listening to a story, or perhaps a teacher's reading a book, or perhaps there's some kind of shared attention. So that's really that's really key, and that's something that teachers can really sort of deploy and and use and think about. So this idea of sort of being in a shared space and sharing attention and interacting with each other is really important. And I guess what that can lead to is us being more creative and thinking about, well, in this new kind of hybrid world we live in, and particularly within coaching, thankfully not so much now in education, but how can we engage and build trust and rapport when we're not in the same shared space? Perhaps when we're doing that via screens and I can share some of the, 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 the research that's coming through looking at what happens when two people interact screen to screen versus face to face.